The next thing we want to look at in 6.1 is Euler's method. Now Euler's method is a, re a way to estimate a value. A lot of times we know the differential equations but we don't necessarily know the solution curves or we know how the slope is at a point but we don't know what the actual curve is. So we can estimate points using Euler's method. So this is, uh, it's a lot of tangent line approximations and you can do it different ways. Uh, y of some new value B is equal to a starting point plus my change, which would be slope times x minus x, all right? Now there's different ways to do this too, and this chart that I'm going to set up is just going to do dy dx times this delta x, and I kind of like the way that he does it here. So I'll show you both methods, one with the tangent line approximation, and then one with just the change. So here I'm given a differential equation, dy dx is equal to y. I have a starting point, and then they also give me a step size. What I can do is figure out uh, what a value might be for an estimate for this curve in around that area. So let's estimate this differential equation in and around the area of 0, 1 with step size 0.1. So I'm going to start off with this point. So we always start off with our initial point and then find the slope at that point. Well, they tell me dy dx is equal to y. Well, that's just the same as this y coordinate right there. So whenever I have something here and this y coordinate, it's going to be the same thing here for this particular example. And then we want to know how much our delta y is going to change. So delta y is equal to my slope. My slope is 1, so I get that from here, and then I want to multiply it by our change in x, which would just be 0.1. What do I get? Well, I get 0.1. So that means that I'm going to dial up this 1 by 0.1 to get to my next value. So I'm going to get a 1.1. Now what is my x value? Well, I increase by... 0.1. So in other words, the change in x is going to be given to you. That's what I'm going to be going up by. The change in y you have to find. Okay, so it's not this 0.1, but it, it is this 0.1 right here that the y changes in. What's my slope now? Well, it's going to be 1.1. The change in y then is going to be 1.1 times that delta x again. What is that value? Well, my change here is going to be 1.21. So this would now would be 0.2, 1.21. So that's what I'm changing by. My slope, dy dx, is the same thing as this y coordinate. So I'm going to get 1.21. So my new delta y is going to be equal to, what do I got? 1.21 times 0.1. So what are my x's going up by? Well, they're going up by 0.1. That's what it's telling me. What are my y's going up? Well, in this case, it's going to go up by this number here. This number is, is 0.121. So if I add that to the 1.21, I'm going to get 1.331. Okay, so these are all estimated points on my curve. So when I do this, this is... Uh, let's see, 0, 1. We start at 0, 1, which is right here. Then my next point is going to be 0 0.1, 1, 1.1. And then my next one is going to be 0 0.2, 1, 1.21. And then my next one is going to be 0 0.3, 1, 1.31. So I think I'm, I'm going kind of sloping off, tailing off a little bit, but we're really zoomed in. So that's approximately what's happening to our curve. Example 9 says, well, let's do this actually. So we can see what's going on with this. So, so let's separate our variables for this one here. So I need 1 over y dy is equal to 1 dx. And I'm going to integrate both sides. I'm going to get ln y is equal to x plus c. And we know the routine here. This is going to be C e to the 
x. And so if I solve this for my particular solution, I'm at 0, 1. So when I plug that in, 1 is equal to c e to the 0. So c is equal to 1. So we just get y equals e to the x. Plug those values in. Do your calculator and see what my y values are. And I want to compare them to those. Okay, let's compare at point 1. At point 1, I get 1.1. Ooh, 1.105. That's very close. Then at 2, 1.21. Ooh, that got off a little bit. 1. Point, oh, no, I got that wrong. It is 2. Point, 1.221. That isn't very far off. And my last one is 1.331 and 1.350. Notice as the farther we get away, the further away from the curve that we do get. If your curve is very stable, you probably, if it's concave up or concave down, you'll probably get further and further away from the curve as you go on with these different values. But not a bad estimate at all. So really what we're doing is using little tangent line approximations in order to do this. And from this equation here, we are finding this right here. This value will always be the same. This is your delta x. Your dy dx is going to change each time. And notice that I took the previous y value and added it to that change in order to get my new value. So in other words, I took 1.1 and added my change, which was 0.11, to the 1.1. This is the 1.1. This is your change, which was 0.11. I hope that makes sense. You can do it all out in this form. That's what happens sometimes. But I kind of like this little bit of shortcut method as long as you remember that you increment as you go down for the y's. Okay, example number 10. Use Euler's method to approximate the particular solution for the differential equation y prime is equal to x minus y passing through this point and delta x is equal to point 2. So notice my x starts at 0. It won't always start at 0, but I can go like this because my delta x is 0.2 every time. My y is going to start off at 0.5. However, I don't know what my change is until I figure out this value right here each time. So let's find out what dy dx is. Remember, dy dx is this x minus y. So it's going to be negative 0.5 because it's going to be my x minus my y right there. Then delta y is going to be equal to my slope, which is negative 0.5, times my delta x. My delta x is 0.2. That's what they tell me. So this would be negative 0 0.1. So that is my change in y. So what I'm going to do is go over here. I still have my 0.5, but then I'm going to change by negative 0.1. So when I come off of that, I'm going to end up with 0.4. dy dx is x minus y, so I'm going to end up with negative 0.2. And you should probably pause this and try to do these steps yourself, otherwise you're not going to know what to do. Then I do this step, which is the slope, which is negative 0.2, and then I multiply by my increment. So this is going to be negative 0.04. Delta y goes down here, so I'm going to be now at 0.36. Delta y would be, oh, now I'm in positive territory, so this would be 0 0.04. And then delta y is equal to my slope, which is 0 0.04 times 0 0.2. So my change in y is going to be 0 0.008. And so I add that on here. So that's my estimate at 0.6. So I'm going to be 0.368. Can't possibly graph that appropriately, but I'll try. But that would be an estimate for 0.6. Go ahead and plot those and see what the curve looks like. So this looks like an estimate of my curve. All right. Now, you could go solve this differential equation, but I don't know if we can do this by separation of variables. Probably not. So we don't, maybe can't see what it looks like, but this is an estimate of the curve. Now, unfortunately, I have example 10 and example 11 on two different pages, but they give you the slope field on example 10, and they say, okay, what is my solution look like if I kind of follow the curve lines to the slope field? Will it look like this? 
So that's what we have to keep in our memory for example number 11. So I'm going to draw this, drop my hat in the water here. If I come down, I come down like this. It looks like it flattens off. And then as I get over to the other side, I look like I start going up again. Does that look like what we just did? Yes, very much so. Okay, so that gives you an idea of the combination between the slope field and then also Euler's method. You're kind of doing the tangent lines as we go along to figure out this solution curve, an approximation of it. Okay, so that's Euler's method. Euler's method is approximation for the curve, or you can even figure out, it's kind of like combination of many tangent line approximations as we go along. That's all it is. All right, I hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for listening, and I hope you have a great day.